what we do that's different than the rest of the guys, we take our chicken breast, and once it comes out of the fryer, and we dip it in the warm sauce of your choice. So it's almost like eating a chicken tender or a wing, trying to give you all these different experiences. Not just a dinner or a sandwich, but that boneless wing on the bun. Everybody, it's Tejo here with What's the Biz with TJ, and I am here with Anthony, aka Chef Head. Yes. AKA, I feel like everybody I interview always have like nicknames that the city go uh -huh. by. The people, she got, you got your hood name, your street name. Uh -huh. Well, my name is something from the people. It's the people chef. So, yeah. Anthony T. Head, the people chef. So, they nicknamed you that, like, just to be clear, or did you? Go years, on? actually, years ago, actually, in all fairness, one of my former uh, owner of a restaurant I used to work for said that. He said, hey, man, you know, you were chef for the people. You're the people chef. And I rock with that. And uh, right before I left the restaurant, he kind of gave me that moniker. So, we're going whatever since. It's been reinforced mm -hmm. by a lot of my community activities yeah. and things I do for the city. So. That's what I was about to say. So, the first time I ever came up across your name is um, I was working for Preschool Promise. Mm -hmm. And um, we were just trying to show parents like how to cook with their kids. Yes, and yes, we yes. were supposed to work together, but we both got super busy. So, we yeah. never did. But like looking into it and just talking to you, you were so open. Like, I brought the idea to you and you were like, yes, let's do it, like I can find a kitchen. So you are the owner of the chicken spot. I am the co-owner of the chicken spot. Okay. I'm one of my lifelong friends for 25 years. Uh, you know, we had this op great opportunity in Northwest Plaza, which has already been identified as an opportunity zone in West Dayton. Uh, so we had all these factors coming together. We had a tenant in this space that was moving out, and my boys like, you got to make it happen. Like, yeah. now or never, you know, we talk about all the time, product over talent. You know, we got a lot of mentors between Nipsey Hussle had just passed away, and we knew kind of the projects he had on the horizon. And of course, I'm a little more old school, so, you know, Master P is a lot of our mentors from a business perspective. That is crazy, because like Nipsey Hussle is definitely like a seed of yes. Master P. Basically what you're seeing is people take their natural kind of innate abilities and fully maximize their potential, yes. not just for the benefit of the family, but for the greater community at large. I think when you talk about your business and your mindset, money doesn't come to mind. Like, I don't think about money when I think of you. I think about like you want people to eat good food. Like, oh, that's just a, that's what I get from you. And also like something that you posted earlier this year, like you your bank account. Like you were like, I was like, he's transparent. Yes. I was like, that's what, you said. what made you do that? Yeah. Uh, because people think it's all glamour, right? You know, there had been some conversation about uh, people talking, leaving you a day job, pursuing your dream. And that sounds all well and fine until you can't pay your bill. I want to break up this whole notion of you either go to college or you work for yourself. I said, no, I've used my education, I've accumulated skills over the course of my professional career that I'm now using for the benefit of myself and my family. That post really, it, it it inspired me. Like I was just like, I was just like, first of all, it was bold. It was like to be so transparent. And then I feel like that's what people need to say. You know, sometimes because like you said, people think it's like, oh, I quit my job and now I'm just this right, billionaire, right. billionaire, yeah, I'm yeah. successful. Um, but like to show the struggle, I think that's really important. So you mentioned struggle, but the really the really important part about that post is really investment. Yeah. That's the word I want people to come away with. The willingness that I was willing to invest in myself down to the last 40 cents of my account, right? Because here's the thing, people get their paychecks, they pay their bills, they may do a smaller dose for themselves, we hope they're saving, but how much are we actually investing? Saving is squirreling away. Investing says, I'm going to put this somewhere to make it greater. Right. Let's talk about the Medusa. Like, the Medusa. Eh, 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 eh. So the Medusa. So this is so funny. I had, to, I had to mess with people. When the first pictures of the Medusa came out, people were like, man, that's so ugly. It was like, we we know. Yeah. That's what we named the Medusa. So Medusa yeah. is a, is a is a kind of a demonic creature in Greek mythology. Wow. Uh, sisters, actually three of the three gorgons. They were cursed and they were very beautiful and. You can read about it, but the whole point is you look at Medusa, you turn to stone. In this case, uh, we wanted to make an ugly sandwich that we know it was good, but it was very intentional. I used to wear dreadlocks for years, I had dreadlocks down my back, and uh, they were curly. So, the kamatapi noodles that we use to make our macaroni and cheese, I represent the coils of my own hair, the very basis of my DNA. Then the collard greens, come on now, that's ancestral memory all day long, right? You know, when they kidnapped our ancestors from the west coast of Africa, a lot of them had what are called cohort seeds in their pockets. Cohort seeds are really what collard greens are. Yeah. So the reason why some of the things we call soul food, they, if they don't remind us of home, they're literally from home. 
right? They didn't go into the interior and fight wars. They kidnapped farmers and fishermen and brought them over here, right? It was easy picking, so that's who came here. And, you know, through the mix and the matching of, of our genetics over time, they created us, the African Americans. When I talk to people about the Medusa, I'm just like, it's a meal on a sandwich. Like, so, it's literally so good. One of the things that really pushed me to start interviewing black business owners was like kind of like the Popeye and um, Chick Fil A thing. Yeah, I was those guys. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like doing all of that, where where was your mindset? Like? So the beautiful thing about it, we started, we actually opened our doors for the first time on July 27th. Unbeknowing that Popeye was coming down the line with their thing. Chick fil A been doing her things on 50 years. So we in our lane, we date. That's what I love about dating. So we came to our rescue. Some people like yourself shared those videos, talk about us. We had the biggest sales day ever during that same time. Um, so the com and we had to spend, I don't think we bought flyers. We old school, right? Well, just like Popeyes received $23 million in free advertising. I said we probably got easily a million dollars of the same because of resharing. And in fact, I think shortly after that, we got a national mention in the blog that talked about the top 10 sandwiches not made by those other guys. And we were among them right here in Dayton, Ohio. So quite literally, we accomplished what we thought was going to be a year-long, five-year goal of putting our city on a map for this particular sandwich. Happened in a matter of weeks. So the Chicken Spot actually has one of the best reviews, like the funniest mm -hmm. reviews I've ever seen. Your heart people, I love them. Yeah, so I'm going to read one that was really funny to me and it really stuck out. <laughs> Which one is So it? basically it was like, I think I cried a little when I've been into this sandwich. Yeah. The Medusa, finally, best chicken I ever had. Yeah. And there's a lot of them if you check out their Facebook page. Yes. There's a lot of funny reviews, a lot of serious ones. Like people are like, get there. I don't know what you're doing, but if you're yeah. not at the Chicken Spot, yeah. Tripping. What we do that's different than the rest of the guys, we take our chicken breast, and once it comes out of the fryer, and we dip it in the warm sauce of your choice. So it's almost like eating a chicken tender or a wing, trying to give you all these different experiences. Not just a dinner or a sandwich, but that boneless wing on the bun. You know what I mean? So that sauce really builds upon all the flavors. And every element, everything on this menu is intentional. Let's talk about this lemonade. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Sipping it wet your whistle. Yes. This is something I love the story behind. There's so many stories. Obviously, we've been kind of, the colloquial name is the lemon head lemonade, but that's a, as we know, a protected mark. But my last name is, so first name lemon, last name head. That's the play on the name of all of our sounds, but as well as this product. And it's just simplicity at its finest, well executed. What we're doing our lemonade is we actually make a lemon sugar from the flesh of the lemon, which is actually a very expensive labor process, labor intensive, but the product it yields is a match. So the sugar that we use, I've been posting pictures online, actually smells like lemon candy, which kind of gets a play on this name is about. And then we use that basic element, like all lemonades, sugar, lemon juice, and water, and that's it. But what I love so much, we're talking about kind of the very intention of everything in our menu, it's a palate cleanser. Every bite is like the first time. So the lemonade kind of plays that. Well, thank you so much, Anthony, for meeting me with me yes, and yes. talking to me about the yes. chicken spot. And uh, we'll chat with y'all soon. All right, thank you guys. Bye.